Let's go ahead and run npm run migrate. And we can see that our user's migration was migrated. Now let's go to table plus to verify. We can click refresh and now we can see migrations table and we can see the user's table. Hello guys. A while ago, I created a video on how to use SQLize with Next.js. Next.js had a few updates since then, including app router. So that video got out of date and I decided to revisit the topic. Let's take a look at how to use SQLize in Next.js with app router. Next.js is a full stack framework and adding SQLize to it has two parts. Well, first of all, migrations, and we're going to be using SQLize CLI. And second, SQLize model in the project itself. So let's start with adding migrations to the Next.js project. Before we do that, let's actually create a Next.js project itself. We're going to use command npx create next app latest. Just hit enter. And what's our project name? We can call it next.js SQLize. We want to use TypeScript, we want to use ESLint, we want to use Tailwind CSS, SRC directory, yes, app router, yes. Do we want to customize the default import aliases? No, let's leave it at default. Next.js app is created. Let's go ahead and open it in the VS Code. In the VS Code, let's go ahead and open the terminal and let's install a couple of dev dependencies. We will use SQLize CLI to run the migrations and then .env CLI to pick up our environment variables from the .env file. Next, we are going to install dependencies MySQL to SQLize and SQLize TypeScript. The next thing we're going to do is to run npx SQLize CLI init. This will initialize migrations. Well, besides migrations, it's created a couple more folders, one of them config, models, and seeders. But unfortunately, it's just spread out all these folders across the root. So let's go ahead and collect them in a folder called database. Let's go ahead and create database folder, right? And let's go ahead and move config in there. We're going to move migrations in the database folder. We don't need models, so we can just delete that folder. And finally, let's move seeders in that database folder. Also in the root of our folder, let's go ahead and create that env file. In the env file, we're going to define our node environment as development and database connection credentials. Looks like by default, um, Next.js doesn't put that env file into git ignore. So let's go ahead and add our dot env file into that git ignore because some people like to use that env local, dot env production and everything. So I like just to use dot env file. Let's go ahead and save the git ignore as well. We can close dot git ignore and uh, dot env files. And let's go in the config folder and update the config.json file. So first of all, what we're going to do, we're going to rename it to config.mjs file. Let's go ahead and delete whatever we have here. In the config.mjs, we're going to put the following. We're going to export options where we can define database connection credentials. We also will define the logging. If it is development, we're going to be using console log to log our queries. But if it's a different environment like production, we're not going to be doing logging. I also like to define my migration storage table as migrations. And then uh, we're going to check if node in the environment is production. We're going to add a dialect options where we define SSL connection and reject an authorized true. So this will make our connection to my SQL database uh, secure via TLS. Since it is production, that's a good thing to do. And then we're also going to export default options. We're going to put development, test, and productions. And we're going to have the same options for all of them. However, you know, if you need to do something different, you can uh, define it right here. This export will be used by SQLize CLI. Now in the root of our project, let's go ahead and create that SQLize RC file. This file will let SQLize CLI know where to look for configuration that we just defined migrations and seeders. Let's go ahead and put the following in there. I'm going to have a path and then module export. This is we're going to tell where to find configuration file in a database config config MGS file. Uh, seeders can be found in a database seeders folder and migrations in database migration folder. Next, we're going to go and add a few commands to a package.json file. 
let's go ahead and open it here and then we're going to add the following command migration create we'll use sqlize cli migration create uh, migrate command we're going to be using sqlize cli db migrate migrate rollback and migrate roll, rollback all and as you can see we're using a dot env cli right here to pick up our environment variables from that env file now let's open the terminal and run the command npm run migration create and we will name our migration create user stable and because of the dot sqlize rc file um, our sqlize cli knows where exactly to put that migration that migration will be in a database migrations folder so let's go to the migrations folder and open the file migrations file generated by sqlize cli is a little bit outdated so let's delete everything and put our own code in here let's go ahead and uh, use uh, first uh, op function right they're going to create our migration we're going to create table users with the id integer unsigned that will be auto increment true and it will be a primary key the next column will be name and it will be a type sqlize string and it will be not nullable so allow null will be false and the next column will be preferred name and the type sqlize and allow null will be true but we won't put it here because it's nullable by default in sqlize right now we're going to put timestamps uh the we will not allow null however we're going to have a default value as a current timestamps and the updated at the same thing uh we're going to have it as a sqlize date and default value as a current timestamp so now we're going to put a down migration or a down function to create a down migration and we're going to basically drop the table users now let's open the terminal and do npm run migrate let's go ahead and table plus to verify that we can click refresh and we can see we have migration stable and the user stable so we successfully added sqlize cli and migrations functionality to our project now let's go to the part two in this part we need to add sqlize models to the project itself so let's go to the src folder and in this folder we're going to create file called db underscore connection.ts this connection will be used by our application itself and not sqlize cli let's go ahead and put the following code in this file we're going to import sqlize from sqlize uh, we're going to import sqlize options from typescript and options from the database config config mjs the ones we exported earlier so we're going to be reusing them uh, for the application and uh, now we're going to define those db options and there will be a type of sqlize options and we're also going to add to db options the dialect module that will require mysql2 now we're going to define uh, sqlize it will be a new sqlize model with uh, options and then we're going to just basically export sqlize and this will be our connection now in src folder let's go ahead and create a models folder and in this folder let's go ahead and create file called user.ts this will be our model let's put the following code in there let's go ahead and import model and data types from sqlize and then import sqlize as connection from our db connection file that we created let's define a class user that extends model and here we will declare the types of id number name string and preferred name can be string or null because this field can be nullable and then we're gonna uh, have a user init command where we actually you know define these fields again but in terms of the database again data types integer unsigned auto increment true primary key the name it's going to be a string allow null false and preferred name will be also the type string and then we're going to define then we're going to tell that the table name is users it's going to use sqlize connection and created at will be called instead of created uppercase at it will be called created underscore at and the same with updated at we're going to have updated underscore at and then we're going to go ahead and export the user now let's go ahead and create a page where we're going to be displaying the users so in the app folder we're going to create a new folder called users and in this folder we're going to create file called page.tsx this is basically next.js's app router so slash users will lead us to this page let's go ahead and put the following code in here we're going to import users from the model 
Now we're going to export cons dynamic and we're going to put uh, force dynamic. This will make sure that the next JS uh, doesn't cache this page or build this page statically. It will be dynamic page because we will be accessing dynamic data from the database. Now we're going to have a defined function get data. So the users, we're going to query all users from the database and we will be returning users. So now we're going to define our page component and we're going to get users from the get data. So we're going to destruct users uh, and we're going to return the following HTML. So it's going to be main right here. We're going to map over users and we're going to output name and then we're going to output the username. That's it for the users page. So let's go to the index page, right? We're going to click here and we're going to put the link to our users page, right? So let's scroll and see where they start links. And right here, we're going to paste the following code. So it's going to have a link to the users page. We're going to style it with a Tailwind CSS and we're going to have like a user. So when we click on it, it's going to lead us to users page, right? So let's go ahead and import link from the next link and save the file. We're all set. Let's open the terminal and run npm run dev. And now our application is ready and it's running on a localhost 3000. Let's go to the browser and type in localhost 3000. And in a little bit, a little while, yeah, it takes a little long to spin up the Next.js application apparently. So we're going to have the Next.js right here. And we have the link to the users page, right? If we click on this link, again, it's going to apparently take a little while. And we can see users, however, is empty because, well, we don't have anything in the database. Let's head to the database and create some users. So in the table plus right here, we're going to add a row. We're going to put name Alex. Uh, preferred name can be nullable. Hit enter. Let's put another name, let's say uh, John, hit enter and then save it. So we have the users in the database, All right? Head back again to the browser, click back button, click on the users link again. And now we can see name Alex and name John. So our users are getting pulled out from the database. And now since this page is already built, you know, it, it is looks like it is much faster. If we head back to VS Code, we can see that there are queries, right? They're being logged since we're logging in development. However, right here, we also see a warning uh, that dependency request is an expression. So basically, Webpack is complaining about um, SQLize. I'm not really sure how this warning will impact the application, but since it's a warning, we can go ahead and, uh, you know, turn it off. So let's head to next uh, g config.mjs file and right here we have a next config so in order to turn off that warning in next config we're going to put the following uh webpack and we're going to have the config and in the config of the webpack we're going to say ignore warnings and i'm going to tell to ignore warnings from the sqlize module let's go ahead and open terminal again and run npm run dev looks like our application is ready to go um, but before we gonna look at the browser, let's go ahead and remove a record in table plus so our data changes. We can just go ahead and delete this user John. Now let's go back to the browser, click on the users. And again, it seems like it takes a little while for the page to compile. And finally, it takes us to the users where we have a name Alex. As soon as the page compiled by Next.js, now it's uh, way faster. And this is how you can add SQLize to your Next.js app router project. However, it seems like SQLize makes uh, Next.js run a little bit slow, uh, at least in development, and all that Webpack warning doesn't make things any better. So I think using Prisma ORM in Next.js app router project will be a better option. If you would like to learn how to use Prisma ORM with the Next.js, please check out this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.